Welcome to episode 242 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today, and we're going to be talking about how conflict is a very important step to intimacy. I know it feels like a really deep topic, and it kind of is, but it's kind of practical too. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So one of my first, no, not one of, my first job, very first job in the automotive industry was as a service writer, a service advisor, they could be called. So basically this is the person that when you go to get your car fixed, this is the person at the desk who either takes your call or when you walk in, you speak with them and they, you know, they walk around your vehicle with you and you tell them what's wrong. Um, they schedule you. They basically handle all the customer service portion of, you know, of getting your vehicle fixed. And then the, the service writer will then, you know, take the job, make sure it's entered properly, give it to the technicians. They usually dish out the work to the techs. The techs do the work, tell them what's wrong with the car. They call you, tell you what's wrong with the vehicle. So then you can kind of decide what you want to do with it. That's a service writer. My first job in automotive was that I had zero experience in the auto industry period. And uh, this is going back to probably the year 2001, 2002. Never walked in a dealership my entire life. And this was my first experience. And get this, I absolutely loved that job. I loved it. And, I, and uh, the gentleman who hired me, his name was Chris Burrett. He was the dealer principal for Burt Chevrolet in uh, Oswego, New York. Uh, now he's passed that on to his son, Rich, who is running the store. I haven't been up there in a long time, uh, but I should visit sometime. Either way, Chris was a, a big mentor for me, especially early in my career. I was not an entrepreneur at the time. I had the tendencies, hadn't started any businesses, and he really gave me something to kind of look to and gave me a direction and trajectory of entrepreneurship and helped me focus the energies and the things that were happening then. And I learned a lot from him. And I remember when I went to apply for the job or when we were talking about it, he seemed pretty keen on the idea. And I was very hesitant on the idea. And I said, you know, I don't really know that much about cars. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to do a good job here. And he said to me, I don't, I have technicians that know about cars. I need people who understand people, which is why he thought the job was right for me. So I took the job. Um, I absolutely loved it. Built a good rapport with my techs, started building good rapport with customers. I love solving the problems. I loved the straight up chaos that happens as a service writer. Uh, I kind of thrive in the environment where there are a lot of moving pieces, a lot of interactions, uh, a lot of little little details and practical things happening. So I love the job. And uh, the reason I tell that backstory is to get you to this little point of mentorship that Chris gave me, which is the premise of the conversation today about conflict being kind of the base and an important part of intimacy. I remember I had this issue with a customer and the issue was that there was something wrong with their car. Um, the warranty, the factory warranty was saying they weren't going to cover it. They were really upset about it. I didn't know how to solve the problem. So I was kind of upset about it as, you know, to the extent that I get upset. And, you know, Chris told me this, I was, I was like, they're really upset. They're never coming back. You know, they have a bad idea. And he said to me, when there is a problem, you have a disproportionately higher chance of building a meaningful relationship with that customer than if there was never any issue at all. Basically saying, until there's a problem, your relationship is probably going to be at a surface level. And if you have a deep problem, that's actually a great opportunity to build a deeper relationship, one that you never would have been able to build if there wasn't a problem in the first place. And so uh, the way that situation went with that advice, and you know, he obviously armed me with some practical knowledge and some practical wisdom on how I could actually steer this and help the co customer solve it. I actually, he got involved and I watched him work with a customer and I watched that relationship and trust grow as a result of that situation that was full of stress and tension. And me personally, I don't like it when people are unhappy with me. I just don't. <laughs> so, but either way, I watched that turn itself into a really great opportunity and a repeat customer that probably went around and told people how great it was that the dealership solved their problem in the way they did. Now, this principle is applicable across the board in relationships. It is easy to see when conflict comes at us for me, speaking personally, it's easy when conflict comes at me for me to shrink away from it, 
for me to feel bad about the fact that there is conflict, to not want to deal with it and just kind of get a little bit quiet and want to want to give much more than I should to the point where it is imbalanced, right? They call that an enabling relationship. When someone presents you with conflict and you just overgive to make it better in a repeated fashion, right? That's that that makes me um, very high risk of being an enabler. But the reality is when conflict comes, it gives you a chance to understand the other person, to think about the entirety of the situation, to communicate at a deeper level than you would have communicated, bringing both people probably out of their comfort level and navigating that situation to a point, ideally, where both parties feel like they're being taken care of. You're right in business, they call it a win-win, right? When you call, it, when you call things a win-win in a relationship, like a, a personal relationship, it seems a little bit like surfacey and not great. But in business, we call it a win-win. Um, I'll say in a personal life, a feeling where both parties feel that they are being cared for. So this is true all the time, all the time. I can just speak personally in my marriage, in my business partnerships, in any relationship that we have. Conflict comes up and my, my first step is back, right? It's not like, let's step into the conflict. It's like, let's step back from the conflict. Let's deflect the conflict. Let's try not to have the conflict. In the worst times, it's let's pretend the conflict doesn't exist. Have you ever done that? I've done that for sure. Um, I'm sure I'll do it again. But when you engage in conversation around a point of conflict, and you can do so in a way where your ego is in check and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you really want to see the other person win and your heart's desire is to actually do that, you start to draw that out in other people as well. And when that gets to be the center point of the conversation, and there's a lot of understanding and empathy between two people, guess what? That conflict is now the source of a very deep and meaningful growth in relationship. If the conflict never happened, you would cruise along and maybe your relationship would be fine. But conflict is the synthesis of depth. It just is. And if, I mean, this principle is the same across a lot of things um, in life, you know, when it even comes like to things like working out, right? I've called it the transaction of growth, right? Growth takes pain. Conflict is pain, but conflict leads to deeper relationship. In business relationships, same thing conflict and you know things you didn't expect actually are opportunities to strengthen the relationship like you know like they say like mma fighters when they train and they just hit stuff with their arms and their legs and their fists what it does is that that conflict creates micro breaks in the bone and what happens when there's a micro break in the bone is that the bone your body will strengthen the area where the break is. So now that part is stronger than it ever would have been had there been no break or no conflict. Which is why if I hit something with my forearm or my shin, it's gonna react very differently than if a trained MMA fighter hits something with their forearm and their shin. It literally is harder. It is more prepared. It is more solid. It is more immovable. So that's kind of the high-level principle I wanted to share. I'm going through it right now. I go through it all the time. And it's nice at this part of my life, I'm 44 years old now. I had to remember I was 44. My wife told me that I was 44. I've been telling everybody I was, I'm 43 for like two years. Not, be, not because I want people to think I'm younger, just literally because I don't think about it. It doesn't matter. And in these 40, like 45, I'll remember, 50, I'll remember, and then we'll just see what happens after that. Um, but that little piece... I hope you can take that away because for sure you have some conflict in your life right now. And for sure those conflicts cause uncertainty, instabilities. Maybe you shy away like I do. I just want to encourage you as I'm encouraging myself that conflict is the doorway to intimacy and meaningful relationship to a level you never would have been able to experience had the conflict not been there in the first place. So as much as you can, welcome the conflict in as much as that welcomes in deeper, more meaningful relationship. I hope that perspective, that little bit of clarity helps you out today like it's helping me out by sharing it with you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. I will see you next week. We can